Hey, what's going on YouTube? Derek here, and I'm bringing you some more incredible Goodwill Outlet scores for CDs and uh, some cassettes. And uh, I want to discuss a little bit at the end of this video about uh, start. I'm going to try to be branching out into selling CDs and cassettes, but we'll, we'll talk about that at the end of the video. I have three stacks of CDs and a big pile of cassettes. Now, these didn't all happen on the same day. I'm pretty damn sure I didn't show these cassettes in a video yet. I know I didn't show any of the CDs. Um, but these all came... The, the cassettes I got a, a couple weeks ago, but the CDs I got over the course of like the last week, which is crazy. But uh, the cassettes are four for a dollar, so I was like, shit, I, I gotta buy these. I'm sure they're worth something. So... Uh, let's get into them here. Starting off, we have Cypress Hill. Insane in the Brain. Most of these are old school hip hop cassette singles, but not all of them. Some of them are not. Uh, Sir Mix a Lot, Baby Got Back. Domino, Ghetto Jam. I don't really collect cassettes. Uh, this is Super Snacks. I don't remember what it was. Uh oh, this case broke. What the hell happened there? Oh well. Rat. R. Kelly, bump and grind. Fuck R. Kelly, but I mean, that like cassette I believe was worth a little bit. Ricola Jam, no idea. Pump It Hottie, Redhead Kingpin in the FBI. I didn't know a lot of these, which is why I bought them, because I was like, well, maybe they're kind of obscure. And I was right. In a couple of cases. On to the next stack here. The Fugees. Snoop Dogg, What's My Name? Uh, full album here. Queen Latifah, All Hail, The Queen. And I have, like, absolutely nowhere to sit this stuff. Wrecking Effect, Rump Shaker. Tone Low. Uh, lo loaked After Dark. I don't know how the hell to say that. Run DMC, Mary Mary. And Rockbox. Great songs. Uh, X Terminator in the Valley of the Jeep Beats. Homie Don't Play That. Featuring Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, the Two Live Crew, Sports Weekend, As Nasty As They Want to Be Part 2, which I believe is a full album as well. It, yeah. Uh, Ice Cube, It Was a Good Day. If I was collecting cassettes, I would want that. I am not into collecting cassettes, though. Um, I just don't have the room. Maybe one day. Devo, Freedom of Choice. The B fifty twos whammy. SWV Sisters with Voices. I fucked up. I I thought this would be hip hop, but it was like sh shitty R and B. I think. Winger. Led Zeppelin four. Uh, this one was kind of cool and it's a little obscure. Uh, Tech Master P E B. Bass computer. Oh, this is the one I... I don't think I could find it on Discogs. I didn't know how to look it up. So the side says Dropping, but the front has a bunch of names and stuff. And this says Jamiroquai, so I don't know what that is. Molly Crew, Shout at the Devil. The single for Shine, Collective Soul, which is a great song. Coming down to the last of the cassettes... Final stack here. Oh, it looks like another another case broke. How'd that happen? Oh, I don't remember that being broke before, but hell, what do I know? Maybe it was. Uh, Ritual Day Low Habitual. Uh, you're going to see this CD coming up here in a minute. But it's a little different. Escape. Just kicking it. I think this was uh, R&B too. Uh, the single Beck Loser. Vivid, Living Color, really great album. 
uh, Twisted Sister, Stay Hungry. That case is jacked. And the final cassette, uh, Stum, Grow. That is sealed. Uh, taken from the work release, Grow. Demonstration only. Don't remember what that was. I, I, I want to say, I think, I think it was Indie Rock, maybe. But not sure. All right, let me move these out of the way here. Moving on to the CDs. So, like I said, these all came on uh, three separate days. And I'm, I'm going to try to save the best for last. So, I'll pull them out as I see them, but let's get into it. Super Tramp Classics, Volume 9. Which, I, I don't know, I might keep it. Uh, VCR, which I thought was a bootleg. But I looked it up on... Discogs, and I don't think it's a bootleg. I think it just looks like that. Um, I, I sampled it. And I remember it being pretty good, but I don't know what it is. L.A. Guns, cocked and loaded. Uh, now I have the second and third album. I just need the debut and whatever else. Uh, Dishwalla, pet your friends. Now I bought this because I recognize I recognize the name Dishwalla, but when I was uh, looking at the tracks, I didn't recognize any songs. When I got home, my buddy said. Uh, Counting Blue Cars was the hit, and I recognized it as soon as I looked it up, which was cool. Great song. Aerosmith, Permanent Vacation. Uh, I did not have that for my Aerosmith collection. Red Hot Chili Peppers, What Hits, which I swore I had, but I guess not. Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble, Blues at Sunrise. Uh, I guess this is like some unreleased material and some alternate takes, maybe. Pretty cool. Love Stevie Ray Vaughan. Van Halen debut. I'm very happy to get that. Uh, maybe my favorite Van Halen album, tied with 1984. Great, great stuff. The Quakes, Negative Charge. Uh, I looked this up and I think it, on Discogs it was classified as uh, Psycho Billy. Might be like a $10 CD, but I want to listen to it in case I decide I like it and don't want to sell it. Uh, which is a case for a certain CD in here you're going to see. Which I have, a, I have to talk about. Uh... SF Blues Guitar Summit, Volume 1. Don't know anything about it, but it looked interesting to me. Steely Dan, Two Against Nature. Uh, Speed of Jack, or Jack, sorry, Jack of Speed is a great song. Uh, underrated album. Good stuff. Uh, the Birthday Party, Hee Haw. And The Birthday Party Hits. Uh, this was a band I picked up uh, in that big punk lot. Uh... And I found a couple more. I figured I'd grab them. Apocalypse Pow. I remember looking that up too, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, super, super excited to get this one for my personal collection. Good news for people who love bad news. Modest Mouse. Don't have any Modest Mouse on CD. Really excited to get that one. The Beavis and Butthead Experience. Really excited to get that one too. I, I believe I have the movie soundtrack, but I did not have this one. So, really awesome. Alright. So, these are kind of out of order. Uh, so, when I went to the outlet, uh, I don't was it yesterday? I'm recording this on Sunday. It was either Friday or Saturday, I think. Uh, I went to the outlet, and I hit kind of like a noise rock mother load of some 90s and 2000s and like... Noise, noise rock, and just weird shit. Um, and these CDs are kind of worth a decent amount. And I'm probably going to sell them. I need to sample some of them, but noise rock isn't my favorite genre, so I don't have to have these. But I do want to listen to some of them first. So we got Mincemeat or Ten Speed, Strange God. Uh, Wooden Ships, Volume 1. Uh, this one, I think, was actually classified as Stoner Rock, so I really want to check it out. Witchcraft. Uh, I guess self-titled. Greg Kelly, The Self-Hate Index. No fucking idea what that is. I bought this one because of the name, but I think it turned out to be Noise Rock, too. AIDS Wolf. March to the Sea. Oneida, rated. K 
Coach Wimps, Bangers and Fuckers. Had to buy that too. Another Oneida. Happy New Year. Sorry if my chair is creaky. I need to go buy a new one because this one is actually breaking. Alright, I don't think that's all the noise rock. No, it's not. But, uh, I think there's a couple more. But, getting into some of the non-noise rock stuff that I found on that day. The Misfits. This is absolutely going in my collection. Um... Very excited. I actually should have probably pulled this out and left it to the end, but we got Misfits. Excited. My Bloody Valentine Glider. Uh, this is an EP. I don't know anything about this band. I just know they're highly regarded, so I want to check it out. Carl's Greatest Hits. I actually didn't mean to buy this. Uh, I think it just ended up in my stack somehow and I missed it, but whatever. Orter Realm. I have no idea. Don't know what it is either. Jane's Diction. Ritual Day Love Habitual. This is the uh, uns or the censored cover. Very cool. Save that one to the end. Save that one to the end too, probably. In fact, I'll just... I'm going to save all the stuff that I really want for my collection. Uh, anyway, so the last one in that stack is XBXRX. Uh, I believe that was Noise Rock. Alright, these next two I'm actually giving to a buddy. Uh, I know he would appreciate them. I, I would kind of like to keep them, but I'm going to let him have them. The Corn Family Values uh, Extra Value CD, which has some hilarious writing on the back. And... Uh, a guy I never see in the wild, so this was cool. Aphex Twid. Uh, Drux. D-R-U-K-Q-S. However you fucking say that. So those are from my buddy. I'm gonna let him have those. Put that in there. In fact, I can put all of those in there. I'm gonna save that for last. All right. Saving these for last. This is what we got. Fits and the Tantrums. Songs for a Breakup. Volume 1. Fits and the Tantrums. Picking up the pieces. And Fits and the Tantrums. More than just a dream. I'm a huge Fits and the Tantrums fan. Became a real big fan when this album came out. I uh, remember hearing it when it came out. 2013. Wow, it's been seven years. Every song on those albums is an absolute banger. Uh, Out of My League is fantastic. Uh, what's that other one? Out of My League. That's just, I might have just said Out of My League. Uh, Last Raindrop. Uh, the Walkers, obviously, a classic. House on Fire. Just a great album. Really, really stoked to get all three of those in one go. Uh. All right. Gary Moore, still got the blues. Don't remember who Gary Moore is. Oh, one. Uh, PlayStation case only, and it's a fucking good case, and I can't believe it. Marvel Comics, X-Men versus Street Fighter. Just the case in back art, no manual, but for a dollar, I'll buy that case any freaking day of the week. Yellow Swans, Psychic Succession. Psychic Secession. I think that was kind of pricey. The Get Up Kids. Something to write home about. Don't know anything about them. I just bought that to sell because it was like five bucks on Discogs. Uh, same for this one. Ben Harper. Save that one for myself. Uh, Shovels and Rope. Little Seeds. Got that to sell. An Evening with the Allman Brothers Band. It says first set, so I, if this is part of a set, I don't know what I'm doing with it. Some of these I'm saving to the end because they're worth a good bit, too, so. And there, they just went. They just went. Alright, alright. Hang on here. 
I can get myself uh, resituated. So. Y'all need to go over there. As I already showed. Stupid. Need to show those. Okay. I think I got it situated. Fudge the CD. And I forgot to turn off Facebook. Whoops. Fudge the CD. This is a Australian CD, and I believe it's like techno trance, technotronic stuff. So kind of cool. Another noise rock. Soul side. No idea. Uh, kind of expensive CD here, and I don't, I don't think I want it. Um, even though it is a wrap, E40, breaking news. Uh, I think there's like a fifteen dollars CD on this one. And AZ the Visualizer, Sugar Hill. So now we're getting into the CDs that I am keeping. Uh, well, not not all of them, actually. Some of these are going on Discogs. These are just the better ones that were worth a little more. And uh, just the ones I want to keep. So the first one is Edgar Winner's White Trash. Now, I actually listened to this the other day. And it's it's fantastic. It's kind of like Chicago. A lot of horns. Some really, really great solos. Um, just a great album. Really highly recommend that. Uh, super stoked to find this X under the big black sun. That I'm definitely keeping 100%. Slaughter, stick it to you. Uh, kind of a uh, early '90s hair metal band, I think. Don't know a whole lot about them. Uh, I can't remember what the hit was, but keeping that one. Purple Rain. Did not have this. Don't have any prints on any format actually. So to get that is really cool. All right, so here's a case of a CD I bought to sell because I, unless I looked it up wrong. Discogs had it at like fifteen dollars, um, and it's taking back Sunday notes from the past, which also has uh, another disc in it. Apparently, did I never look in here? Well, the disc is in fine condition. Uh, is this a two? Is this a two disc set? I don't know, cause that's in there too. I don't, I don't know. That kind of looks fake to me. I don't know anything about... I don't know a whole lot about Taking Back Sunday. Sorry. Just a couple songs. But we got that. Save that one for last. All right. These two also were listed at, like, I think between $10 and $20 each. I don't remember how much exactly. Revolution. Br uh, Bright Side of Life. And Dropkick Murphy's The Meanest of Times. Now... I don't know what it is with live albums, but sometimes they're worth a good bit, and uh, that's the case for another upcoming uh, CD here. Now, this is only two discs, right? I'll have to, I'll have to look into that. I hope it is. Uh, excited about this. John Coltrane, A Love Supreme. Admittedly, I have never heard this album, and I know that, that uh, I need to. I know that I need to. I'm planning on it. Me and my buddy are actually going to listen listen to it. And something I just realized, and I'm going to have to take a picture of this to send to him when I'm done. Uh, McCoy Tyner is the piano player. Now, McCoy Tyner, we just found out about literally, like, yesterday. The day after he died, which is fucking weird. Never heard of him. Found him because we were listening to a uh, rap album, and he was a sample Unbelievable piano player. Really good. We listened to uh, his album Trident. A great, great jazz album. He is the piano player here, so gotta hear that. Actually, I'm gonna set that to the side because I know that I'm gonna forget if I don't. Alright, here's another one that I never heard that I listened to, and it is The Kinks. Uh, the Kinks are the Village Green Preservation Society. I admittedly, once again, did not know a whole lot about The Kinks. I know Lola vs. Power Man. I know the hits other than those. 
I know, you know, you really got me. Uh, Sunny Afternoon. Uh, some other stuff. Oh my god, this album is a fucking masterpiece. The song Big Sky might be one of the best songs I've ever heard in my life. But I mean, the Village Green Preservation Society, do you remember Walter? Masterpiece. Picture Book is great. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal album. I can't believe I'd never heard it. Really good. The Melvins. Houdini Live. Never find Melvins stuff anywhere. Uh, especially, you know, not destroyed. This one is in actually very good condition. Uh, usually when I see Melvin stuff, it's pricey because not that... They're a known band, but they're not a mainstream band. Pet Sounds. Super stoked to get this. Uh, I have the record. One of the best albums, obviously, ever. Uh, so, to get the CD is great. And last two. Uh, so... I, when I saw this in the bin, I, I, I kind of laughed because the cover is so hilarious and I knew what it was immediately without even looking at the title. Iron Maiden, Dance of Death. Now, I don't know... I, I know one song here. I know Passchendaele, which is a great song. I need to listen to it. I honestly don't know a whole lot of Maiden past the 80s. Like, I've never heard Fear of the Dark or anything past that in full. So I want to give it a listen, but God almighty, is that some of the worst cover art or what? Terrible, terrible cover art. And the last CD I have to show in this video, and a kind of pricey CD too, Iron Maiden's A Real Live Dead One. Which is actually a European release. Um... When I looked this up on Discogs, I think it was like 15 or $20 for a copy. And both discs are in here, and they are in very good condition. Which is great, because I don't know if I had any Maiden. Yep, I do. I, ha I have at least one. I have uh, Seventh Son. Oh, not the last one. I'm an idiot. I'm saving the best for last. The most expensive CD that i found. And I don't even know why. So... I, I looked it up on Chance because they had the guy's name on the front was DJ Rags. And it said, and here, I'll just show it to you. Web Entertainment, LLC, DJ Rags. And the name right there, that little ass name, that's the name of the group. It's WeBI, which is not printed on the side. And I didn't even see it on the front. So I thought this was an album by like DJ Rags. So when I looked it up initially, I couldn't even find it. Um, but the album's called Middle Eastern Thought. Now, you might notice, this is actually a sealed copy. Yeah. So, I'll pull up... Oh, I, shit, I can't because I'm recording with my phone. Discogs has this averaged at $50 for an open copy. Um, but, this one is sealed. But what's kind of cool about it, and uh, kind of crazy about it, actually... But it makes sense of why I would have found it at the Goodwill Outlet. In the bottom there, somewhere over here, I think. Yeah, right there. It says 2001, Web Entertainment, and then 3126 West Cary Street, 114 Richmond, Virginia. Now, what's interesting about that is that is where I'm from. I live in the Richmond, Virginia area. In fact, the Goodwill Outlet is, funny enough, in Richmond. So it perfectly makes sense that this would be there. What doesn't make sense is why it's so damn expensive and sought after. Now, I will say there was one review I could find on Discogs, and uh, the guy said it was kind of a masterpiece of underground hip-hop. Uh, there were a couple songs, I think, uh, online, so I, I do want to sample it, but I don't think all of the songs were online, and that sucks because my fear is that I'm going to sample it and think it's really good and want to listen to it. The problem is, I don't believe all the songs are online, and I don't know if I can open this one to, to listen to it, even though it's still worth a good bit open, but... but Here's my question, and if anybody's still watching, I know this video is long as shit. We're already at 25 minutes. We're going to probably be over 30 minutes here. 
Um, my question is, do CD seal really, does it really add that much value to a CD? Like, I know in the case of a video game, retro video games, if it's sealed, it's always worth, like, way more. Usually. Um, but I don't know if people care that much for CDs, because I feel like in the world of CDs, you know, collectors are going to listen to them. I don't feel like collectors in the video game world are collectors, like, the same way in the CD world. So I don't know if it being sealed actually adds any value to it. Um, but I hate to open it and, 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 and know that it does. So if anyone knows, uh, I'd be curious. But in the meantime, I'm going to leave it sealed until I decide what to do with it. I, I might sell it. I don't know. I, I, I should sell it. But it's kind of cool being from my hometown. And it's like, where, where am I going to find another one, right? I can't imagine it, there being any more around here. Um, there was one for sale on Discogs, and they wanted $112, so don't think I'm going to be buying that. But, anyway, moving on to that, I am going to start listing stuff on Discogs. I am getting into selling CDs and cassettes. Not messing with vinyl, because when you list stuff on Discogs, you have to grade it. And it's much easier to grade a cassette and a CD than it is vinyl. Plus... In the case of vinyl with grading it, in the most cases, you're going to need to listen to the whole record before you list it. And for people that like me, like with CDs where I find 20 or 30 a day at the outlet, usually, it's not possible. It's, it's just not possible. So, I'm sticking to cassettes and CDs. Um, I have to take a chance on the cassettes, though, because I, I don't have a cassette player. So, I don't honestly know if they play. But they all look perfectly fine. I'm sure they're all right. They look like they all look like they came out of someone's collection. So, um, and uh, if you remember, I have that uh, big box of leftover CDs from um, Second and Charles that I, I didn't know what to do with. And and the thing is, with Discogs, it's kind of worth listing stuff for 99 cents because a lot of people, when they order something from you, they're going to see if you they have anything else that that they want, so they can get cheaper shipping. And I know I do that when I used to order stuff on Discogs. So having stuff for 99 cents, if someone's already ordering stuff and they throw it in there, it's not adding anything to ship it because I can ship all this stuff media mail, basically. But yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, once I get the Discogs thing up and running, I will certainly update you guys on how it's going or if it's complicated, anything, any issues that arise. But I'm very excited to try it because... Like I said, I can find CDs everywhere. They litter the thrift stores, flea markets, garage sales, and the outlet. Like I said, in the last week, two weeks, I've probably bought almost 200 CDs because they're just everywhere for nothing. They're worthless uh, to, to, to thrift stores. I mean, they're, most Goodwills around here used to charge 225 for a CD. Most of them now have switched to a dollar. There's only two, I think. No, there's three. There's still three. The one that's near my house, the one that's about an hour away, and the one that's um, near the outlet. Those still charge two twenty-five, but the rest have switched to a dollar, which is phenomenal. Um, the outlet sells them for a dollar. I wish the outlet sold them for a quarter, but um, I can live with a dollar for shit that's good, like the Kinks and Iron Maiden. That's not not gonna be a problem to pay a dollar. And I hope the streak continues. I hope I continue to have good luck because uh, I enjoy going every day. And I've been finding some video game stuff there too. Don't worry, uh, pick up video for that. For anyone who is interested in the video game stuff, you should be getting a pick up video. Uh, sometime sometime this month, I would imagine. But yeah. That's going to be it, guys. I know this video is long. Thank you all for sticking around and watching, and I hope you have a great day. This is Derek, and I'll catch you all later.